Okay, I think we finally got it. So tonight for our lab, we're gonna be focusing on pen weights. <coughs> and this handout gives you a bit of an idea of what that might look like. Um, and so we tend to, for the things that are tallest to the ground, we tend are tallest in the air, highest above the ground. We tend to use a very heavy pen weight for medium height uh, items, um, we use a medium uh, sized pen. And then for very uh, surfaces that are very low to the ground, we use our very lightest pen. So hopefully that can be kind of a visual guideline on how to use some of these pen weights. So these are my typical pen weights that I use. Um, hopefully you guys have at least three of those. Um, I've got my Sharpie, which is one of my go-tos. Again, I mentioned that I tend to use very inexpensive pens um, because I go through them pretty rapidly. Um, but some people choose to use very expensive pens and that's also a good choice too, if that's your thing. Um, I tend to use a sign pen for my next pen weight, um, a stylus, or I've really been migrating to a razor point. Um, the stylus has changed manufacturers, so they tend to, they've been drying out lately. And then I use the Micron, very small, um, 01 or 001 uh, type, type pen for my very finest lines. And so those are the pens I'm gonna use tonight. Um, but if you only have three pen weights, you can um, certainly make do with that. So um, this is really an exercise of tracing, but I would like you to use a straight edge on it. So if I look at this little plan here, um, you can see I've got a building. That's the market up, up here. I've got a couple little kiosks. Maybe that's like the little coffee kiosk or flower kiosk outside of Henry's. Um, I've got a plaza over here. I've got this little green space. I've got a frontage street with some tree grates so I can put some trees in. And then we have a neighboring property on this edge so we can kind of um, fill in with some bigger plant material to start screening um, the activities of this green space. So I'm gonna start with my heaviest pen layer, pen weight, and I'm just gonna simply trace over the lines uh, for my buildings. Because my buildings are tallest to the ground, that's gonna be my heaviest pen weight. So buildings and trees get darkened in nicely. And you'll notice I'm taking my straight edge, not my scale, and using that as my um, kind of area. I don't have anything pinned down in as far as formal drafting yet, but I'm really just kind of aligning my triangle to my uh, plan. So I'm trying to get those nice clean lines, but I'm really not doing a formal drafting. It's more of a tracing exercise and then drawing a few new trees in. As we get further on, we'll pin everything, you know, tape everything down so that things don't move around. But this is kind of a nice starting exercise to get you used to how some of this equipment works. So you can see I've got my building outline pretty heavy. I'm actually not all that happy with um, that it's pretty, still pretty light. So sometimes I, for a building, I'll come back and do another layer and make it just a little bit darker. This might be a newer pen that hasn't been well loved. So it's lines still a bit thin. I just wanna thicken that up just a hair so that it really starts to read bold. Going over that a second time, thicken that up. I'm looking for that nice bold line on these edges of that market here. And then these little kiosks, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm only gonna do it on the outer edges of these, not the little crosses that go through. Um, kind of nice to get in the habit um, when we're drafting, we tend to draw all the lines in one direction, just saves a little bit of time instead of flipping between parallel lines and perpendicular lines. So I'm gonna do all the vertical and then just rotating it around and doing all of the 
other edges. Right. So I've kind of got, these are starting to get a little bit bolder, starting to stand out a little bit more, which is what I'm looking for. Now, when I do this, um, you know, let's stick with the bold before we go into that. So I want to get my trees in. So I'm going to take my circle template. I can see that when this was full scale, it was 10 scale. It's a little bit smaller than that now, but I'm just going to find a circle template that works pretty good to, to fit. These are meant to be little tree grates. So I'm going to find kind of a nice size circle. And then I'm going to actually use my blue pencil if I can find it. So my non-photo blue. And I can, you know, kind of play around with the sizes a little bit and find a, a tree circular that fits pretty nicely in these tree grates and isn't too overcrowded together. So these are, you know, it's a pretty small scale. If we did this in the classroom live, we would have it a bit bigger. But for tree symbols, one of the ways I like to represent them is I always put a center on them. Let's see if in the there we go. So you can see I've got my blue circle outlines. I always kind of dot the trunks in the center. That's kind of a strong symbol, keeps me track of how many trees I've got. And then I just like to do kind of a wavy, irregular outline as a quick tree outline. So I'm using that guideline circle and I'm just creating a quick tree symbol. So I've got my three trees in now. Maybe in this area where we've got the context of a neighboring property over here um, and this green space, maybe I'm going to put a few bigger trees in my park. And again, you, you can put them wherever you would like to put them. So I'm going to just kind of put a few trees in my park. Let's see. Just kind of roughing them in. I'm always trying to keep track of where the center point of my tree. So here you can see that tree is inside that planting area. I'm going to make a big canopy tree there. Just roughing in some circles of where that those might be. Uh, maybe now I'm going to go with some smaller trees along here. All right. So it's just kind of providing a little bit of an edge to this area that's adjacent. So keeping track, see my circle doesn't fall right on the line. It's actually in one side or the other. And I kind of like that, that idea of a big tree. So maybe along this plaza over here, I'm also going to put another, another big tree, give a little shade. You know, we've got north facing this way. So that means most of the shady side of a tree is going to be on the north side. So I would start to shade this plaza a little bit. I'm gonna pull it down so that it's not right on the plaza, it's just off the plaza. Um, but maybe over in there, I'm just gonna put another big tree. But you can put these anywhere you want. And I'm gonna get my bold, darkest pen out again, and I'm gonna do the same thing, where I'm gonna mark the center of these, All right? And I'm just gonna create that kind of wavy, dark edge around these trees. And there's all kinds of different symbols we can use for trees. We're gonna get into plant symbols in the next uh, week and, or two as we get into developing plans, but quick and easy, you know, symbols for trees are just kind of these wavy lines. I used to spend a lot of time doing tree symbols and, um, it was kind of a waste of time because then I would, would color them in. So for these big trees, I'm just gonna add some kind of little less windmill-like symbols. You can see that a little differentiator of species. Again, we'll go into a lot of different symbols uh, for, for this class, but that's kind of one way we could do a quick symbol. And then, of course, coloring it also shows a lot. Then for our medium shrubs, our medium pen weights, um, I'm going to go first to shrubs. And I'm just going to 
put a few rows of screening shrubs in here. So these large shrubs might be a medium pen weight. Um, I'm gonna, again, just kind of rough these in along this edge, right? And I'm, I'm not even gonna necessarily make it all that orderly. I'm just trying to create a guideline row. The nice thing is when you use a circle template, you can actually count how many shrubs. So it kind of becomes like a, an implementable uh, plan for a contractor to build. So again, I'm trying to create some screening from this neighboring property using a little light, lighter pen weight. This pen is actually well loved and well used. So it's reading about, it's pretty similar to my thick pen weight. So and that happens as they, you use them and they flatten out, especially if you're heavy handed like I am. So, um, you know, but try and think about making this a little bit darker and then the medium shrub. So I could add, this is a relatively new pen. So I could make that a little bit bolder if I wanted to kind of really make a statement of that tree. Thicken up the edge of it, make it pop off the ground a little bit higher than those shrubs. And that's what I'm really trying to do is create some dimension um, just on this flat 2D non-dimensional surface. So, all right, there we go there. We got a little thicker, thicker on our trees. These a little thicker too. So I'm really differentiating that bold line weight. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go to actually my very fine pen weight. So that could be your, um, if you only have three pen weights, that could be the razor point or the stylus. For me, I like this micron, so I'm going to go that, that low. And I'm just going to then add, got my coarse areas laid out. I'm going to start adding some fine texture in. So one of the things I like to do for lawn is just kind of a little hatch pattern. So, you know, this is another symbol. I like to, I've noticed that, the, you know, in, in landscape graphics, that when you make the edges um, a little bit more detailed, it, it kind of reads nicely. So I'm gonna focus on creating just these little hatches around these edges. I'll rotate this around. Oh, trying to keep hands. Okay. Just providing some really some texture to this lawn area. This is one symbol. Sometimes we use just little dots for lawn, like a stippling. Um, we're going to use that particular technique on the concrete. And light pen weights for ground covers, anything low to the ground. All right, and so then I'm just going to bring a couple of these out further. Right, so now I've kind of got this little hatching on my grass. So one way to hatch it. Um, another area that I want to put some of the fine detail on is on these little kiosks over here. So um, if I look at this and I have my sun um, 
point kind of the going this way. So this is the north side of the building. This would actually be the shady side of the building over here. And this is going to be the area in bright sun. So when I'm doing a roof, I tend to draw uh, lines that are roof, like kind of little tiles on the roof um, closer together. If I'm in, in the shady side, it gives it a little bit more depth. So both of these corners would be in shade. So I've got a little bit more depth over there. I'm gonna do the same thing real quickly on this one. And I tend to do like almost a little dash line. I find if I do them solid, it, it becomes pretty bold and sometimes can draw your eye there unintentionally. So we just wanna add, I like to add just a little bit of texture so that it doesn't overwhelm. It still stays kind of a light pen weight. Um, and again, that's that's just from kind of experience. And then on this side, I'm, I'm gonna bring just a few of these lines. So maybe only half as many because this area is gonna be in that bright sun. Maybe I'll just put a couple. And so if you notice that if you look at things in shade, there's actually quite a, like out in the landscape, just looking visually, you'll notice that there's a lot more detail to things that are on the kind of the edge of shade or partially shaded. Um, and then things that are in full sun almost get washed out, like too bright. So, so that's kind of mimicking that from a a design standpoint. Again, you know, north is coming up this way. So this side of these roofs is in shade. I see a little bit more detail. And then in sun, it's a little less detail. And then let's put some score patterns in. So um, I like to go over the outside edges of my, my different hardscapes. And you can go right under your trees when you're doing kind of scoring patterns. We want, that's kind of usually a pretty expensive surface. So, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is I'm just going over this with one of my, uh, this is actually the stylus or the razor um, point. So I'm kind of just making those hardscape edges just a little bit darker. Along here's another bit of hardscape. Kind of just going over them and really defining that edge. Right. Right. Just making those a little bit more bold. And then I'm going to use my, my very, very fine micron, which you may or may not have. And I'm gonna create a kind of a scoring pattern. So I'm gonna start at this and I'm gonna go corner to corner on my score pattern. And again, anything low to the ground, like a score pattern, we're using those really, really light pen weights. So I'm just gonna, for this one, I'm gonna do a kind of a diagonal hatch. If I was drafting this formally, I would actually um, use, you know, measure these out. So many, you know, each score line might be, you know, 10 feet across or five feet across. For now, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, getting these. And you can put whatever kind of concrete score pattern you want. If you want a curve, a linear pattern, feel free to be creative. You know, some of you are going to be chomping at the bit to get into design. So feel free to make, you know, curvilinear shapes, whatever you like, but put some kind of pattern in your, this is your plaza. So this would be kind of your enhanced paving area. Uh, and I'm gonna do just this kind of grid, grid pattern here. I'm just trying to keep them spaced evenly. I am just eyeballing it. If you want to be really perfectionistic, which I certainly have a tendency to do when I'm doing design, feel free to get the 
scale out, if you know how to scale and measure exact squares. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. So now I've got this kind of hardscape area, and I can also add stippling to it, which is kind of something that gives your hardscape a bit of texture. I tend to have more texture, more stipple along the edges, and then less in the middle. It's that idea that the edges tend to have more de detail and the way the light washes across the surface, it kind of wipes out some of the detail. And then I've got these big swatches of hardscape coming into this space. Now, say maybe in front of the market, maybe I wanna do something like really fun and you know creative and curvilinear here. Um, I could kind of play with my pencils create some curvilinear shapes if I wanted to. The blue pencil will help you to kind of um, play with those without actually having to use pen. But because we're using pen weights, a lot of people get really anxious about pens. So maybe I decided I want this to kind of pull people from the street into the space. So I'm using some forms to kind of accomplish that. So now that I kind of have rough forms in, I can kind of draw them in. Um, I'm trying to continue in through my space. Maybe this is a, a little market down in Ocean Beach and they, they want this kind of sea theme in their concrete to meet the site. Um, so I could do something like this. Again, I can stipple it, create um, some texture um, along in there. Kind of gives it a little bit of life here. And this is kind of in keeping with what we do with concept graphics, right? So now we've got a couple different kinds of hardscape in there. I've got this very grid pattern, and now I have a very curvilinear pattern that's a little bit more creative. And maybe this, this side, it just comes, you know, it's a pretty basic um, square kind of thing that just runs perpendicular, as perpendicular as I can get. Just a big space here, right? Maybe these are just big 25 foot panels of concrete over here. Again, if you guys have the little rolling, you know, or straight edge and, you know, you're, you're wanting line straight, you're welcome to kind of start playing with those. We'll go through how to set all that up. This is just really meant to be an exploration of some of these pen weights as we get into design. I'm going to add some stippling again to this concrete. Just adding, oh, you guys can't even see it. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. So I just made this big grid over here, adding some stippling to give it some texture, using again that very, very lightest pen weight for some of this fine detail on the roof on the paving, on these designs through the concrete. Um, I'm gonna add some more score lines along this sidewalk over here. Let's see if we can get it so where you can see it. So I'm just creating, you know, typical sidewalk. And for hardscape, we usually bring, you know, we just score, we show it right under even trees because this is a, a pretty expensive surface. We'll do this with plants too. Um, 
but conceptually we want people to really understand what's hardscape and what is planting. Okay, so I've got my light pen weights done. I've got lots of scoring patterns done. Um, I have my big heavy trees. I have my shrubs. So now I just wanna get into maybe some mm, ground cover that's taller than grass, but lower than shrubs. And for that, I again, just do a very informal line where I come right inside the edges of my planter and just create this little kind of scribble line and fill it in. So I'll kind of go around these shrubs. That's like a block of shrubs. And this is just like a, you know, maybe this is a ground cover that's a foot or two high. So just really defining that edge and making sure everything's planted out. Okay. Again, let's see, I did a little bit of stippling on my sidewalk there. Um, but that's pretty much it for the Penways lab. So, you know, as a recap, you're going to focus on the things that are tallest, that are highest, like the buildings, like the trees are going to be your darkest, heaviest layers. And then, you know, kind of the larger shrubs are gonna go into the medium. The next lightest pen, pen weight is gonna be defining the edges of hardscape. And then um, also kind of the taller ground covers or lower shrubs and then moving into the very finest for the fine detail. And I think what you'll see, especially if you compared it with, you know, one that's printed out and hasn't been done is suddenly this has to have a three-dimensional nature to it where the other one did not. Okay, so you can use that as a reference, maybe take notes on what um, parts to add to this, uh, you know, here, we've, well, actually I've got it hardscape detail, but the lightest medium is our shrubs, edges of hardscape, and then the heavy is those edges of trees. So those are kind of your three pen weights. I do tend to use this very, very fine one a lot for that fine detail. So I tend to go a little bit further, okay? So that's the pen weight lab. And I think you'll find that quick and easy. This particular one is our concept bubble diagram. And so what this site is that doesn't fit is actually, um, hmm, I think I'm actually gonna do this at home because I want a better camera set up and I now left it at home. So we're gonna talk about this in the next video and a little bit later tonight. All right.